part of the reason the Niners defense works, this wide nine kind of gimmick defense that not everyone else uses, but the Niners use and use it well is because they had DJ Jones. They had a nose tackle who would not move when double teamed all game long because you get double teamed all game long. And so was the, thir- the three technique, both of them. So the, DJ Jones is gone. It's down to Hassan Ridgeway, Kevin Givens, and Javon Kinlaw. Do you think the Niners can stop the A-gap runs this year? Only if Kinlaw is the guy doing it. Because I think Kinlaw is the guy there. I mean, he, you know, uh, DJ had had unbelievable weight room strength, but then that weight room strength transitioned to the field, and it was functional strength. And he was enormously strong at the point of attack. He's like which a tree made, trunk. Yeah, what's that? He's like a tree trunk. Yeah, and and it, and, it, and it made his quickness as a pass rusher like, wow, that was like gravy. It was like, wow, look at this guy. He's amazing. He's this awesome run defender. And, oh, Andy can go get the pass for a little bit. Honestly, so, real quick, if Javon yeah. Kinlaw could do what DJ Jones did, you'd be like, that's a good first-round pick. Yes, yes. Yeah. And <laughs> you know what I mean? I'll go yeah. further than that. I think it, yeah. they're now on a championship trajectory if, if Javon Kinlaw can be DJ against the run. And the key for Javon is just play low – you know, good leverage and stay on the field because yeah. he's kind of proven that he's the he's the he's big and strong, and you have to combo block him to get yep. him out of there. Yep. Um, but it's just about leverage and health. If he can play with leverage and play with and stay healthy, um, I think he can fulfill his potential and and be that anchor in the a gaps that DJ was. That's, he, but he's the no. guy who's got to do it. He's so those other guys I don't have as much confidence in. Maybe Ridge. I mean, I don't think Givens can do it. Givens is a nice pass rusher, but I don't think – I mean, you can move him with a double team. He's not He's not big for a defensive tackle. Ridgeway, yeah, I suppose. I don't know. I haven't seen him in action. I haven't seen him in a wide nine. Kinlaw I've seen do it. I know he can do it, but he has to. He has to be there all the time. He has to be consistent because if you're giving, if you're giving, getting gashed in the A-gap – you can't stop anything. There's no reason for the for the other team to do anything but run the ball right up the middle. It's the easy. It's the quickest, most direct route to the end zone. You're going to yeah. get that all day. And it's demoralizing. Yes. It's demoralizing. Yes. Yeah. And it's like it's like basically the other team shouting over the PA system. You're soft. We're gutting this team. You're We're soft. gutting this team down the middle. Yeah. yeah it's you're it, it's, soft. it's demoralizing. Yeah. And also it works against the Niners' strength. Their strength is they've got fast linebackers with four or five speed who can beat you to the edges. But if you can start gashing them down there, you know, uh, in the A gaps because you don't have a defensive front, then suddenly does it matter? that they're all four or five guys if they're just getting bulldozed down the middle. So DJ was huge and strong and Kinlaw is, they need him because he's the key figure in that front. I wonder if the Niners had known two years ago, how good, how good uh, DJ Jones was and how Eric Arms said ultimately would be moving to defensive tackle. If they still would have drafted Kinlaw. Because they basically like, we have to take a defensive tack. We have to replace Buckner. Well, in retrospect, you had DJ Jones and Eric Armstead. Maybe you could have taken Tristan. You know, you could have gone in any, any direction there. I wonder if they have thought have thought about that in retrospect. Yeah, I, you know, that's a great question. And you know also, I mean? also, did they, you know, what did, what did they envision with Kinlaw? Because Kinlaw only has one and a half sacks in 18 games. So maybe they were envisioning more of a pass rusher than he's demonstrated to this point. Maybe that knee hasn't gotten right yet. Maybe he, he there's more pass rush there, um, you know. But again, if that's, that's not the on case. him. That's on the Niners. Like, why did you think that was there? He didn't really put that on film. He didn't really put that on his stat sheet. I mean, he showed you what he was a very good player, but you thought he was going to be DeForest Buckner. I mean, he didn't have that kind of pass rush production in college. So or moves. I mean, Buckner had a club, know. had a cl- good club move and a good swim yeah. move. Yeah. Most of my criticism of Kinlaw really has been directed towards Lynch and Kyle for making him Buckner's replacement. That wasn't fair. I mean, well, you know, and and wow. it's really more about it's about health. I, yeah. I don't I don't really have a, a problem with anything I've seen from Kinlaw on the field, though he's you know he tires out sometimes and sometimes he loses leverage. But I mean that's that's a number of guys. Um, DJ Jones was unique because DJ Jones was six one, built very low to the ground. 
Uh, so he he didn't he, let, he had an advantage leverage wise, I think, on most guys. But it's I don't have a problem with what I've seen from Javon. We just need to. He's now going to be instead of hey, you're playing in an incredible deep rotation, and let's see you emerge. Now it's like we have to have you emerge as the number one run defender in the middle of this defense. You right. are the anchor point for everything else. That's true. And he doesn't necessarily need to become a great pass rusher for him to have a, to be a, a positive on this defense. But no. he actually could become a really good pass rusher with Chris Kasarik guiding him if he, again, could just practice consistently. Because we saw Samson Ebicom. He was essentially a, a 3-4 outside linebacker, edge setter on the Rams, came to the Niners, and by the end of the season was a pass rushing defensive end. I mean, he'd really improved and learned all kind of new techniques – could happen for Kinlaw too. He just needs to practice consistently, and his knee needs to let him do it. It's not like he's it's not like he's not trying to practice. He wants to. It's just he's got this knee that was red flagged at the combine that the Niners knew about. I don't know. He will benefit the most if the 49ers can come up with another D Ford, whether it be Drake Jackson oh, yeah. or you know Ebukam, if some or you know if somebody else up opposite Bosa can come flying off the edge and that quarterback has to st- climb the pocket, step into the lap of Kinlaw. I think his sacks, he could triple his sacks this year. Jeffrey Wilson asks, what roles do you see Ambry and Lenore playing in 2022? Um, left and right bench. I don't know. What do you think? Well, um, I think Ambry is going to be one of their top corners. And I think Lenore is going to be in the nickel or dime, probably off the bench. I mean, Lenore's there. Lenore, they're like seven or eight deep right now in the corner, and he unfortunately is in that seven or eight spot. Where Ambry, I think, is is closer to the top of that list. He's an improving, ascending player. I'm not sure what happened with Lenore last year. I am eager. He's one of the guys I'm really eager to see in camp in year two and how much improvement there's been. I was starting to come around on Ambry and thinking that he had – really improved until he got burned for the touchdown today by Ray, Ray, Ray McLeod. I don't know. I mean, I think Ambry is a, I mean, he's a promising young player, probably number three on the depth chart outside. So if Traverius Ward or Emmanuel Mosley misses any time, he would step in and Mosley tends to miss time. Traverius Ward is hurt right now. So Ambry's probably going to get a lot of playing time. I don't know about Lenore. I don't know. He's not big. He's not fast. He gives a big plays. I'm curious to see what happens. I'm not surprised that he fell out of favor. I I was behind Kamoko Ture. I didn't see the <laughs> who's very tall, by the way. I didn't necessarily see the uh, coverage. I th- I thought just from what I was seeing before, Mister Ture obstructed my view. That um, I thought Ambry was was stride for stride with him. Was he not? Yeah, yeah until he got beat. No, yeah, I mean yeah. I, he, I thought it was just a flat dime. It was dropped in the. It was like a Russell was, Wilson drop in the nice. bread basket. It's true, it was a very nice throw. It, it was a very. It was away from the safety. It was beautiful. Yeah, I, guess I, just I would love to have seen that though, because I think I think the coverage might have been you know decent there. There actually was a play also where he was covering Ayuk on I want to say an out route. No, it wasn't Ayuk. I didn't play today. He was covering someone. And he just he really locked him down. It might have been Ray Ray. Anyway, it was just the one bad play. Lenore gets beat a couple of times every practice. Yeah, they're in different different leagues. Ryan Hensley, what's up, man? Says you should get Kinlaw to sign that hat, and you guys can auction it off for charity. I would love if me and him could laugh about this one day like that. That'd be funny.